Okay, so we're going to discuss chapter 15 in our textbook, Milliampere Seconds. And here's some learning objectives for us. First of all, I want to be able to describe how mass controls the intensity of the X-ray beam. Second, I want to be able to explain why mass is considered the primary control for exposure. So I need to be able to state how intensity relates to exposure. Okay? Um, given various values, calculate mass. Uh, explain the base cause of quantum model, which is primarily controlled by mass, and list mass techniques, do's and don'ts. What does <coughs> mass do? What doesn't mass do? All right? What are the factors it controls? What are the things it doesn't control? Okay. So first off, it is helpful to have a working metaphor for this electrical stuff, right? Because I found that students and myself struggle with thinking about electricity sometimes, but we are pretty okay with operating a garden hose, right? So the way this metaphor works is like this. If we think about the water, the amount of water flowing through the garden hose, that is the current, right? And what we notice is that milliampere is a measurement of electrical current. It's the flow rate of the water through the garden hose, okay? So as we increase the MA, we're increasing the amount of flow of current through the circuitry, and that's going to cause the filament to heat up. It's going to increase the temperature, right? So if you think about with the garden hose, it's getting the grass more wet, right? As I increase the amount of flow through the garden hose, more water's coming out, the pavement's getting wetter, right? Um, the process that we talk about for that heating of the filament is called thermionic emission, right? And an example of that is toaster wires heating up. Now what you shouldn't get from this lecture is to go home, turn on the bathtub, and drop a toaster in it, right? That's not a good idea. But you can go home, like run the sink and think about the amount of flow of water that's coming out and also push down the, I literally did this as an x-ray tech student, push down the toaster oven and watch the filaments heat up, right? Because that's exactly what happens inside of an x-ray tube. So not only do they produce heat, they produce ultra um, violet light and they produce red light, right? As they're heating up just like the, um, the, the filament inside the x-ray tube. In addition to that, they produce electrons. So they start boiling off electrons. Um, so these free electrons um, form a space charge around the filament. That means that there's more electrons bunching up around the filament, kind of loosely moving around the filament, right? Um, and this is based solely on the amount of flow through that circuit. So as I change my MA, I'm changing the number of electrons that are floating around that filament. As I change my MA, I'm changing the number of electrons that are floating around the filament. So if MA is doubled, the flow of electrons the flow, and the flow of x-rays is also doubled. Right? So as I change my MA, I'm basically changing the number of x-rays that I'm producing. Um, We'll come back to the water metaphor. It will be helpful for us in thinking about KVP as well. Exposure. So the question is, how can I say that this, this quantity or this intensity, those terms I may use interchangeably, quantity and intensity, same thing when I'm talking about MA. The quantity of x-rays is the same thing as the intensity of x-rays. So x-ray exposure measures the quantity of ionizations in either air, gray sub A, or tissue, gray sub tissue. And we'll talk more about that when we get to radiation biology, but exposure is specifically measuring the amount of flux, or the amount of ionizations in a volume, right? So mass controls the intensity the amount of flux in the x-ray beam. So what I'm saying is quantity equals intensity. And mass controls both. An example for those of us who hunt is like buckshot in a shotgun shell, right? The, you can buy shotgun shells. They may all have the same gauge or the same amount of gunpowder in them, right? 
we'll come back to this metaphor as well, but what we're changing when we change MA is we're changing the amount of buck, right? Or the amount of shot, if you want to call it that way. Sometimes it's called bird shot. If you've ever seen, like, when Dustin's, I mean, uh, when Brandon's out hunting, he probably uses bird shot, right? And how many, how many bucks or little shots are inside of a bird shot, shotgun shell? A lot. A lot, right? This one only has, it says right here, four, right? The bird shot might have, like, 20. So if you want to think about it that way, it's helpful to think about the amount of x-rays or the quantity of x-rays is exactly like the quantity of shot coming out of the shotgun shell. When I turn on my x-ray tube, it's shooting out like a whole lot of shot or it's only shooting out a little bit of shot. And that's controlled by the MA. The MA controls the amount of shot. How many people have shot a shotgun in this room? Some of us, not all of us, okay. It's quite a thrill. I mean, it's a big, big power tool. <laughs> okay. Um, mass is also a mathematical formula. It means milliamperage times time ex expressed in seconds. So it is a product of this amount of shot over time, right? Um, you can think about the number of times that I shoot my shotgun. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about mass. So to figure out how much shot, say, say every time I shoot my shotgun, four shot fly out, and I shoot it four times, I've just made 16 shot fly, right? Because I multiply four times four, and I have 16. The same thing happens when I do these mass calculations. So milliamperage second is the product of MA and exposure time in seconds. It is the primary control, notice the quotation marks, it is the primary control of x-ray exposure, meaning it's the preferred way to manipulate beam intensity. We have other options. We are artists, and we can play with the palette a little bit, but in order for us not, to not get confused by what we're doing, we will talk about mass as the primary control to, and the primary way that we manipulate beam intensity. Okay? MA and exposure time are inversely proportional, right? So what that means is if I want to maintain the exact same technique, the exact same mass, if I double my MA, I will need to half my exposure time, right? Conversely, if I half my MA, I'll need to double my exposure time. Now, one of those is preferred, and we'll talk about why that is in a moment here. But it's just something to be aware of that they are inversely proportional. Let's talk. So I'm going to change gears just a little bit. And now we're going to talk about something that mass controls. So we've talked about how mass controls intensity or the exposure. It also, in a funny way, controls what we would call noise or quantum model. So I have an example here of quantum model. It's a graininess on the image. And whenever the mass is too low, it's insufficient, we will have this graininess that appears on the image. And we'll call that quantum model. Um, quantum model is image noise. The old school film text might refer to it as fog, but fog was a very specific product of film. So to be completely accurate, the best thing to call this, again, is quantum model. I know that's a funky sounding phrase. But it, what it means is, again, going back to the model of x-rays as being flux, um, quantum model is just saying there's not enough flux, right? So in the absence of flux, what we will have is a proportional or a percentage increase in noise. Let's think about how that's the case. So increasing the mass decreases the overall percentage of model on the image. Model is still there. The noise is still there. I just can't see it as much. There's more signal. The model is still there, but there's more signal. Okay? For digital radiography, the use of an excessive mass, which you've probably all witnessed at this point in your clinical experience, technologists who are setting MAs that are just too high, guess what? Digital rewards that. It says, good job. Right? Because there's no way to burn out a digital system. With film, you could burn it out all day long. Digital, you can't. Right, So excessive use of mass is not apparent on an image. 
If you ever hear a technologist saying that image looks burned out, say you're wrong. You're doing it wrong, right? Because there's no way to burn out a digital system, right? That's why they use digital x-ray systems to image like B2 bombers and stuff because they can x-ray a B2 bomber and not burn out the image receptor, okay? So the only means to monitor excessive exposure in a digital system is an exposure indicator. That's the only way to monitor um, excessive exposure. I cannot look at the image and say that's overexposed. I have to look at the exposure indicator, the S number on the Fuji system that we have in the lab. So some technique don'ts, right? And this is what I'm saying here is that these are things that masks don't do, right? Um, mass changes the production of x-rays at every energy level. So the average beam energy doesn't change. The average beam energy does not change, right? Um, one way to think about that, one way to talk about it is that the, the height of the curve doesn't change. The height of the curve might change, but the percentage, the average of energies underneath this curve is unchanged, right? So as I change my mass, I'm changing the height of this or the amperage of this curve. I'm not changing the average area of the curve. The curves are identical. They're like the similar triangles again, right? Um, mass is not a factor in determining image contrast. I guarantee you the registry will try to trip you up on that somehow. And they're not going to be as straightforward as I'm being right here. So go ahead and think mass and <clears throat> image contrast. It does has no relationship whatsoever to image contrast. Okay? Um, mass changes do not affect subject contrast. And mass changes do not affect beam penetration. So I cannot crank up the mass and just hope that enough x-rays are going to get through the patient. If I do not have sufficient KVP, it doesn't matter how much I expose the patient, those x-rays are just going to be hitting their skin and ionizing, giving them a hell of a skin burn, right? There's not going to be enough force to, to get the photons through the other side. So the way to think about KVP as a sidebar is that it's the gauge of the shotgun shell. It's the gauge of the shotgun shell. And we'll come back to that next week. So not to get too far off track, MAC mass does not change beam penetration, does not affect beam penetration. Mass is not a factor in sharpness or of detail, magnification, or shape distortion. So it has no relationship to any of the geometrical qualities that we talked about at so much depth last week. I'll say that again because this is probably the one that people wind up getting confused on the most next to the contrast. It's like number two where people get confused. Mass has no relationship to any of the geometrical factors of the image. It does not relate to recorded detail, magnification, and shape distortion. All right, finally, some technique do's. Mass does control exposure intensity, which impacts brightness. So it, uh, it affects the quantity of x-rays that are produced, that affects the, the intensity, which affects brightness. So as I start to increase my mass, I start to increase my brightness. Um, I take that back, I start to decrease my brightness. They are inversely related, but it does control it. Mass does control image noise in the form of quantum models. So as I increase my mass, I will be reducing percentage-wise the amount of noise on the image. And exposure time, here, remember I talked about how time is something we should file away for a minute? Th bring it back out. Exposure time is a contributing factor to motion blur during x-ray exposures. So of the two formulas, I said if you could choose one, the high MA or the long time, you want the high MA. Because you, the higher I have my MA, the lower I can have my time. And that's reducing my exposure time, which is reducing pa potential patient motion, whether it's voluntary or involuntary, which is going to improve the image resolution. It's going to reduce motion blur or the potential for motion blur. Okay? So it results, um, basically, the shorter exposure time results in the shorter, sharper image. That might be the way to remember it. Shorter exposure time, sharper image. 
And as a thank you, I have the Sharper Image Catalog 1983. This was the best year of toys ever. Look at this giant phone. I mean, that's like what everyone needed. Um, so thank y'all so much for your attention.